Many of you have been curious about how do I at least start practicing trading in the market, even though I have no experience in what's going on. Well, this is going to be a quick down and dirty so that you can start charting yourself and figuring out just what's going on. Now, everyone who trades actually develops their own methodology of trading. So I'm going to show you a very simple one that you can start using immediately to chart exactly what's going on. Now we're going to start with gold. Why? Because gold tends to be a commodity that is easy to track many times on the four-hour chart. In fact, the four-hour chart that we use, that you see before you, with the type of Bollinger Band setup, the exponential moving average, the moving linear regression lines, the MACD, and the derivative oscillator, 50-period moving average. What do all these things mean? Well, all you really have to know is that they are tools. Now, you can sit there, if you're an engineer or a mathematician, and break down all the math. What really counts is first understanding what a candlestick is. Let's quickly look at a candlestick. See these green boxes? These and the red ones, they're candlesticks, and they represent certain movements of stock over a particular period of time. Now, these green candles are four-hour candles. So what does that mean? Well, that's what the stock price did during each of these four-hour periods. Now, do you see the line up here, this green, we call this a wick or a shadow. This wick is actually when it's green and it's above, you've got a green candle and it shows you just how high the stock price or the commodity price, in this case gold, went during that four-hour period on the 10th of August 2015. Now, the green, any, every green candle starts from the bottom of the candle, that is the opening price, that green area, the beginning of the green box is where it started. The green end of the green box is where it ended. The line at the top is the high, and you can tell that the candle started here. It moved all the way up sometime during the four-hour period to the top and then came down at some point to finish. Red candles are just the opposite. They actually show, they start at the top, that is where the market opened that hour, and then it moved down. Now, it actually moved lower in this case, and then moved up to end. That's all you need to really know about candles. There's some interesting patterns to know, and whenever you see up movement, and then you see changes, you want to pay attention to that. But continued green candles moving up are important, Continued red candles moving down are important to know that the stock price or the commodity price is decreasing. Now, you may hear me say stock all the time. I prefer to say something like stock instead of just equity. But in this case, in gold, it's actually a commodity price. But again, you can chart any price changes on a candlestick. They were originally created by Japanese rice traders to actually assist them in trading rice, which of course is a commodity. And it's a quick way to look at things. And you can sure do lots of research. You can go to chartingwealth.com's website and you can see our training on candlesticks. And there's a lot more all across the web. But in and of themselves, candlesticks don't tell you everything. So that's the movement in price. And at any candlestick, if you're using the freestockcharts.com, you can look over to the left of the screen because I have to hold it down right here, and you can see the opening, the high, the low, the last, and it gives you the Bollinger Bands and where all those things fell. What we're really doing, though, is we're keeping it simple. We're just looking. Now, here's what really, really counts most of all, is the MACD. What is this? M-A-C-D 1024. Well, this is the setup we have for something called the Moving Average Convergence Divergence. That is a type of indicator that we use that is extremely important. We have some great teachings on the website that you can listen to. You can just look it up on Google and read about it in Vestipedia and other places. Uh, Wikipedia also has something on it. But all we're looking for is for this blue line to be crossed by a red line. 
The red line is the signal line, and it's, it's an exponential moving average line set at eight periods. Each period, you see, is four hours on this four-hour chart. What does all that mean? You can do the math on it, and I could not even explain the math to you. I can tell you that I have learned over the years that when this line is crossed, it's important. When the blue line goes through, that means that the price of the commodity is making significant upward movements in the moving average. And when it is crossed going down, as between the 14th and the 15th back in July, it is significant in down movements. Now, these lighter boxes you see in the background on this oscillator is something called the derivative oscillator. We like to just see that because I have found that typically when you see the MACD cross at the same time the derivative oscillator flips over going in the same direction, in this one the red line's above, so that means a down move, and when the red oscillator flips over at the same time, typically means a good strong move over. You can see that the red line crossed going, it was actually crossed over going uh, up to the green line, before it actually crossed through, and that change did not hold. In fact, the market went up just a little bit, then rolled back over. Now, why do we care about what happens with the MACD? Because the MACD is typically a pretty good indicator in which way the price movement is going to be. And when we know where the price movement's going to be, we know how to make money when it goes up, and we know how to get out when the market goes down. Now, what's interesting about gold and so many other things that are listed on the Internet, whether it's an ETF like the Gold Trust, which is an exchange-traded fund, or it's something like the S&P 500. There's an ETF we look at every day called the SPY, which is the Standard & Poor 500. There's another one we look at called the Qs or the Cubes, which re represents the NASDAQ 100 and also the total market. Now those three items, IYY, SPY, and QQQ, are in fact indexes, and they track baskets of stocks. They're ETFs, so they're exchange-traded funds that you can buy on the market. The price is actually at the far side of our screen, and you get that price also when you hold down on the green candle. Now, this is important because we want to be able to track where something is moving. And let's get back to gold. Now, if you look at gold on around the 27th of July, gold crossed over going up. Now, what did it do over the next many, many days? Well, it sort of slipped and bobbed sideways and then tracked up substantially. Well, if you look if you would have gotten in when it crossed over on this four-hour chart, somewhere at about, we'll just say the high was 105.33, gold eventually moved up to a high of 107.91. So 105.53 to 107.91, that is a pretty good, pretty significant movement in gold. If you had purchased gold, in the past, and you saw it starting to roll over from its high somewhere in the neighborhood of 115.39, and you saw it roll over on the MACD and got out there and continued to watch it go down, you could have saved yourself a lot of loss. So it's important to be able to look at a chart, read the chart, pay attention to it, and get in when the getting's good, and get out when the chart tops out. Now, there's a lot of things that you can pay attention to. As a chart moves from the bottom, crosses through the 50-period moving average line, and goes up to the top, and then tops out at the top of these Bollinger Bands, and these Bollinger Bands are these blue dashes. You can look up the word Bollinger Band or Bollinger Band, B-O-L-L-I-N-G-E-R, we actually have them listed on the far side of the screen in blue, Bollinger Bands. They are actually volatility bands. The closer they come together, the less movement. You can see how the stock had slipped sideways during this period. That's when they came together, but as there starts to be movement, 
the Bollinger Bands widen to show that movement. And once something tops out and starts to roll back over, it moves away from the Bollinger Bands. Now, is a cross about to occur here, and is gold about to go down again? Well, at the time of this recording, we don't know. It sure looks like it, but no cross has occurred yet. So we wait for that cross to happen before we look at getting a position in a down move. Now, the best time to get out is when you actually see things topping out, and it's hard to get any higher than it is on the green derivative oscillator when it reached that very top. And it's also harder for the MACD, the blue line, to get any higher than it got. So getting out at the point of the top here would have been a good idea in the short term. So literally, all the stuff you hear about how complicated trading is, all the talk that you see on these complicated websites that talk about when should you get in, how should you get in, how much average volume, what are the different oscillators doing, all these complicated things. At ChartingWealth.com, we try to get it down to the most simple thing possible because all you really have to figure out when it comes to price movement is, is the stock, the commodity, the index, the ETF, whatever it is, going up or down in price. Now, the beautiful thing about, like I said earlier, gold is their inverse ETFs, exchange-traded funds, that you can buy just as easily as buying GLD that make money when the commodity, the index, whatever it might be, goes in the opposite direction. There are plenty of different gold funds that move in opposition to gold. It's called an inverse fund. And you can make money, actually, when you get good at determining a certain commodity and the way it moves, or an ETF, or a stock, or an index, in making money in the inverse fund. So there are a myriad of ways to make money in the stock market, but the real trick is being able to read the charts. And we've got a pretty good chart. When you look back at GLD, you can tell that the false positives, and again, none of this is written in stone. Even when your charts tell you certain things, the market doesn't always do what the charts say. But when you find a good chart that is right most of the time, and you start paying attention to the telltale signs that tell you when the chart is not to be trusted or is not good, and the more you practice this and the more you pay attention, the better and better you're going to get. That is just how easy trading in the market is. Now, what are your next steps? Your next steps are to sign up for our email newsletter. Get it every day. We want you to sit there and follow the charts with us. Listen to what I teach you and talk about every day. Start charting your own moves. Actually go to any of these online brokers and open an online brokerage account which you can do and set up a virtual account. What I mean by that, well, you can become a millionaire instantly by simply putting a million dollars worth of virtual money into any of these accounts and then start paying attention to the charts. And when you see an up move, you can buy a million dollars worth of virtual gold if you wish to and watch it, plot it, see what happens, see if you can make money. And when you start making money in your virtual account over and over and over again, and it may take you a few months, but again, if you're devoting five to 10 minutes a day, our recordings are almost never more than 10 or 11 minutes, many times shorter, and you start practicing and paying attention, I assure you that what you do every day and you practice, you will get good at. But you have to make that commitment. You have to tune in. You have to listen. You have to spend a little bit of time. Do it during your lunch hour. Do it during a walk. Listen. Pay attention. And every now and then when you see a good crossover point, go in and buy virtually however much you feel like buying of that commodity of that ETF or index. And write it up. Sell it when you think it's topped out and you've made a comfortable percentage. And then Wait for it to roll over, maybe by the inverse, and then wait for the next sell portion, and then buy again. Work it back and forth like a printing press, and once you get good at it, you can then start developing your own system and doing it for real. 
That's just how easy it is. Thanks so much for joining us. Sign up for our newsletter. Visit us at Charting Wealth. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. We love to hear from you. We hope that you have found this extremely helpful.